M O O R R R E projections it will never end, friends. Here we are, a good week or so after Pakoda came through and stomped all over everyone's optimism, and the timing could not be better. Pakoda was old news, the jokes were stale. Now our second wind is here, ready to fuel us all into rage tweeting at a computer, from a computer, with renewed purpose. We have been given a gift, and there are still three whole corners of the Cubs workout guide available and looking to rent. I give you, Fangraphs Zips projections for the 2019 Cubs. Now, I cannot say I'd blame you if you hard pass the hell out of these. Getting mad online seems exhausting, and pointing out that the games are played on the field is not actually something anyone needs clarification on. They are, in the end, just predictions. While they may be based in a smarter reality than your buddy's three-beer rant about how honestly Mike Trout in a Cubs uniform isn't that unrealistic, they are both just predictions. No one knows what's going to happen. Sports. So what's worth noting about the Cubs Zips projections? A bunch. Let's take a look. 1. Zips thinks Chris Bryant is back. Kinda here's what Fangraph sees for Bryant this year. 0 0.270, 0 0.365, 0 0.493 with a 123 ops and 28 dingers, all good for a 4.5 war. That'd be the fourth highest war of his five-year career, which, on the surface, doesn't look great. War is not without flaws though, and some of Bryant's other projections paint a rosier picture. A .222 ISO is encouraging. Last year, some hitters with a similar ISO included Anthony Rendon, Edwin Encarnacion, and Kyle Schwarber. He's projected to post a career low in walks and get close to his career high in strikeouts, so there's a red flag. With all that said, if there's one player the Zips might swing and miss on, ha, huh, it's Bryant, his injury plagued 2018 makes forecasting trickier. 2. Javi Baez's power is for real. I guess predicting another 30 home run season for Baez shouldn't be that wild, but considering he'd only ever hit 20 once before last year, it feels notable that Fangraphs isn't on his power. On a team with Bryant, Schwarber, and Anthony Rizzo, it's Baez that's predicted to be the Cubs' preeminent power hitter. Strangely enough, Baez is only projected to be a three-win player, and worth almost two whole wins less than he was last season. War has a hard time with players who are uber-reliable at several positions, but this writer isn't quite sure how someone can be the team's best hitter and fielder yet not their most valuable position player. War, man. It makes sense until it doesn't. 3. The rotation might be in real trouble more than any other off-season narrative. This one seems to be where Cubs fans and baseball analysts butt heads most often. Most fans, John Lester doesn't need to prove anything to anyone, a change of scenery is giving Cole Hamels new life, Yu Darvish is finally healthy and motivated, and Jose Quintana is underrated at this point. Most analysts, all four are on the wrong side of 30, with peripherals headed in the wrong direction. Maybe one or two reaches their ceiling again, but all four? As is usually the case in baseball, reality probably falls somewhere in the middle. Terrific insight, I know. Early reports from camper bullish on Darvish, and he seems like the obvious choice for a bounce-back year. Fangraphs disagrees with that, pointing to Quintana, 3.75 FIP, 3.6 WAR, as the Cubs' sneaky good starter while being rather gloomy about Darvish's 2019, 3.82 FIP, 2.5 WAR, the bigger red flag as the pitching staff's production as a whole. All five starters are projected to have eras close to four it's hard to feel much outside of apathy when perusing their numbers. The NL might be stupid good this year, so can the Cubs cut it with merely good but not great pitching? 2 and 4 The bullpen has potential. The Cubs deserve the flack they get for not spending this offseason. That's not to say that they should have signed Bryce Harper, though they should have signed Bryce Harper, but it's not like they've been making other moves left and right either. However, the moves they did make in the bullpen are, rather encouraging. They got Brad Bratch on a one-year deal and Fangraphs loves him. 
we might be looking back in July and wondering why we didn't pay more attention to the Xavier Chedeno signing. Fangraphs loves him too. As Chris Kamka pointed out, both are great candidates to be specialists, as Bratch destroys righties just like Chedeno destroys lefties. They may be versatile enough to handle expanded roles, but if Madden wants to keep them in those roles, it wouldn't be the worst idea. Pedro Strop is a bona fide stud and it's not unrealistic to think the Cubs have a ground ball wizard in Brandon Kinsler either. There's reason to believe, of all five NL Central bullpens, Fangraphs ranks the Cubs, a very, very close, second. Bullpen management is nothing more than an informed dice roll, but the Cubs' late inning arms might surprise people. Chris Bryant's closest current comp is Ryan Zimmerman Jason Hayward's predicted to be a two-win player once again. The contract is what it is, but after the first two seasons, anything is an improvement. Anthony Rizzo is predicted to slash .277, .383, .492 and be worth four wins. This is not news, but his consistent excellence at the plate probably deserves more recognition than it gets. Ian Happ, Victor Caratini, and Daniel Descalso are projected as the worst defenders of Cubs players who will get semi-consistent abs, David Bodie and Wilson Contreras are projected to hit the same number of dingers, 14. That had more than double votes total from 2018 and would be the second best season of Contreras' career. Winton Bernard is pegged to lead the Cubs in steals this season, with 21. Javi Baez is the only starter with more than 10 projected steals. Basically the Cubs aren't going to steal bases, Ben Zobrist's closest current comp is Wade Boggs, 